guys, this is Dustin Rudman from the DRI and you're watching Joburg Today. We are well into the new year. Is your new year diet resolution still intact? If not, then I suggest you consider a healthier eating lifestyle. It's been said that healthy eating isn't a goal, but rather a way of living. This week, Tiger Brands nutritionist Athara Moroka helps us unpack the intricacies of a healthy lifestyle. Athara Moroka, thank you so much for your time. Of course, we are talking all things nutrition. Your expert opinion as to what constitutes a healthy diet around this period? Uh, thanks, TT, for having me. I mean, in reality, we should not have any diet for a particular season. I guess even in summer, it is still important to continue taking a balanced approach to eating. And in that, we still need to you know, have a diversified diet, have variety in our diets, you know, not eat certain foods because at summer, we should still be having, you know, different food from different food groups so that we are still continue to add something that is nourishing even in that particular busy time of the year. Mm -hmm. You said that we should try and, you know, not say that there are bad foods. Please highlight that for us. Yes, we should be detaching emotions from food, not label certain foods as good or certain food as bad. I mean, there is a time and place for any kind of food in our diet. And it's about, you know, knowing, you know, the time and place for the particular food that you want to have, you know. For example, do you want to have ice cream in the morning? Of course not, right? <laughs> because in the morning, there's a renewed sense of trying to do something good because you want to set your day right, right? So have, you know, a bowl of oats because it's something nourishing. It's going to fuel you so that you're able to get your energies up and, you know, make sure that you tackle the day ahead. So definitely make sure that you are able to recognize that you can be able to have a treat if you want, for example, that ice cream, maybe you want to leave it for the afternoon so that you're able to, you know, just, just have something that is going to actually help help you get your emotional benefits and appeal going well. You know, a lot of us think that chocolate is actually, you know, bad for us. Yeah. Products like chocolate, I mean, we often refer to them as treats, or some people might say it's a naughty food, right? And I don't like saying that it's a naughty food because chocolate, if it's eaten mindfully, and mindfully is about recognizing that you need to have certain amount, which is a portion at a particular serving. So, for example, if you're having four black blocks of chocolate, that's the right portion size because you know you want enjoyment, right? Instead of having the whole slab. Yes, instead of having the whole slab. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is if you're going to label it as a naughty food, the likelihood of you having that entire slab is quite high. But if you recognize that, yes, a treat or a snack can form part of a generally healthy diet, of course, you know, that portion controlled slab or chocolate can really be something tasty at a particular time. Absolutely, absolutely. I want us to speak also about the psychological effects, you know, the mind, the power of the mind rather. Um, just the role that food plays psychologically when it comes to weight loss or weight gain. Mm. There's something called, you know, stomach hunger as well as head hunger, right? And it's about recognizing and identifying, you know, your hunger levels and in terms of it being stomach hunger, mm -hmm. which is real hunger that is, you know, motivated by, you know, your energy levels, which are quite low, but also stomach hunger could be something about making sure that you eat when you are really hungry, right? And sometimes could be mean that, you know, you're thirsty, right? Have the water and necessarily, you know, having something that you want to eat, right? But head hunger is something that is driven by the emotions, right? We often, you know, eat because we want to self-soothe or we are trying to distract ourselves or we are procrastinating work and all that. So identify these two types of hunger and really know which one at a particular time you're actually experiencing. Mm -hmm. And just the significance or considerations of liquid diets? 
Yes, liquid diet. <laughs> yes, they become so popular in recent times. People are always doing smoothies or they're saying I'm juicing, you know, all that. So when it comes to liquid diets, the important thing is to ensure that you don't actually consume a lot of calories from that. Because what typically goes into the smoothies is, you know, your starch in the form of grains, it could be your oats, it could be... A, fruits as well it could be yogurt it could be milk and what what often happens is that the energy that you're actually loading in that particular smoothie could be quite high right so you want to manage it to make sure that whatever you putting in that smoothie it is still something that you can actually have if you were having whole foods right because if you're going to have a lot of energy from that it means that you're actually your portion was quite big if it was just in a bowl rather than in a smoothie glass, right? I want to pick your brain about something, Arthur. I'm not sure if you're aware, but Joburg has been you know, ranked as one of the most unhealthiest cities uh, more than once, in actual fact. Now, over and above healthy eating, I just want to know from you, what can we do as, not as a nation, but as people, just over and above the food aspect of it, just in terms of a healthy lifestyle? Your expert advice, perhaps? top three things for us um, to consider? Yeah, it's unfortunate that <laughs> the city we love, <laughs> that we live in, is actually uh, ranked one of the unhealthiest cities. The reality is that, you know, as uh, South Africans um, in general, we actually have different relationships with food, mm -hmm. right? Because, and sometimes we don't understand nutrition, and some people say nutrition is quite intimidating, but also there are quite a lot of nutrition misinformations that are currently happening, right? And I think f with us at Eat Well Live Well, we want to make um, eating better on any budget much more easier for everyone. So I think first people need to have access to information, right? So information that will actually guide them to be able to approach balanced eating in the right way. Because, you know, Eating healthier, as we say, could be quite daunting for a lot of people, with many of us not knowing where to start. So if we have credible platforms like Eat Well Live Well, which actually disseminates a lot of nutrition information and, you know, through different platforms on social media, having healthy recipes as an inspiration for people, I think that way we are able to help anyone all communities in South Africa at an individual level, at a family level, to be able to internalize, you know, eating healthier and making it very sustainable for people so that we're able to create a healthier nation for ourselves and for everyone in the country. Oh, fantastic. That brings us to the end of our interview at Tamara Moroka. It was an absolute pleasure having you. Thank you for joining us.